So whenever you got to talk to these uh, astronauts that you have, was there one question that you were scared to ask but you did or anything like that? No, I, I my, the one question I, that I always wanted to ask them was, again, uh, you know, are they afraid? And, and, yeah. and all of them said, yeah, well, of course we are. You know, uh, but you know, most of the time when when I was with these astronauts, I mean, we did talk some space, but we were talking normal stuff. I mean, I mean, the first time I met Story Musgrave, we were in a bar in Pittsburgh watching a hockey playoff game. I think between Pittsburgh and Buffalo, and you know, me, Story, and my wife Jan, all these other planetarium people sitting at the bar, just and we're just talking normal stuff. You know, we're just because. They don't put themselves up on a pedestal. Yeah, it's the public. We make them out as superheroes. To them, they're they're they're, they're normal people. It's what they do for a living. And every yeah. astronaut I've ever met, you know, Scott Carpenter, Story Musgrave, they've all said the same thing. It's, you know, our our job isn't any more important than the guy selling gas at the gas station. This is what we do. Exactly. So you know, you talk a little space with them, but then you branch off into uh, who's going to win the Super Bowl this year, or which team is going to do this, or what do you think about that? It just becomes normal conversation, like you're sitting in, in your living room talking to your friend. That's, That's the way it is. Yeah, you don't like really see any uh, astronauts that put themselves up on a pedestal and acts like a famous person. The only reason that you hear of Buzz and all of them from the first one was just because it was the first one. Right. Whenever it comes to other astronauts, what I know the guy with the mustache. Uh, that's about it. What's his name? He has a mustache. I think he played the guitar up in space too. He's the first person oh, to play the uh, guitar. I forget that guy's name. He's like the he he's been like the most recent one to kind of you see him a lot more than you do other astronauts. I'm not sure why. And, that and then on uh, there was the guy, the astronaut from Long Island, uh, Mike uh, Mike Massimino, who made five or six appearances on The Big Bang Theory on yeah, TV. Okay. Yeah. I love um, that show. You know, or, or the the big thing on Facebook lately is the picture of um, Bruce McCandless floating up in space with the MMU that that unit that we've seen, and yeah. and I, I spent a whole day with him one time. Uh, had dinner, had lunch, had beers. And it's, you know, it sounds stupid, but these astronauts are the most down to earth people. Yeah, no pun intended. They, they, they're yeah, they, they're they're just <laughs> normal people. It's they go into space. You do radio. I teach about space. It's just. It's just the way it is. And it's been cool being with these people that are, are really as normal as you and I are. Do you bring up topics like aliens or anything like that whenever you're talking to these astronauts or Every something? Every now and then. What yeah, do they yeah. say? You know, well, you know, a lot of them have seen things in space that they don't know what they are, you know, unidentified flying out, whether, whether or not it's aliens or not. And, and, and all these people, all planetarian people, astronomers, ask, we, we all believe there's life up there someplace. Yeah. Now, whether it's... The alien stuff you're always seeing on TV, and probably not, but but there is life out there someplace. They all believe that, yeah. You know, so it's uh, and 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 them when when they've been out there, uh, you know, that they, they get this just interesting experience. You're up in space. Uh, a lot of them, even though they're they're not religious, say it's it's almost like a religious experience. You're 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 up in space. You're looking down on the earth. It's different. Yeah. So a lot of them have to have a change of the way they think about things too, just as cause of 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 what they do, but. You know, they're, they're just a great group of people, and, and that's something I, that, you know, planetarian people are very fortunate that, that we've, we've been on a first-name basis with people like astronauts and the technicians that got us to the moon and, and stuff like that. It's just a, a really cool thing that most of the public will, will never get to do, and that's, that's been some of the highlights of my career. I'd say it's been such a fascinating life. It to is. Live. It, it, it is. It's uh, the people I've met, the places I've been to, the hardware I've been next to, the actual rockets that have launched. I actually sat inside the centrifuge that trained all the Apollo astronauts. It wasn't moving at the time. I was going to ask. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 I wish, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they, they they let us actually sit in the the centrifuge that that, that wow. you know, all, all the Mercury, uh, Gemini, and Apollo astronauts use. And I just okay, I'm sitting in the same thing that Neil Armstrong trained in. Wow, how many people could say that? Wow. It's just cool. It's, you know, and I think that whenever it comes to public interest, that science in space will be the next venture with everything going on. And that's really exciting to me because yeah. within the last few years, well, the last few decades, there hasn't, the interest hasn't been there. You have a right. little bit, but it hasn't been popular yeah. like it was yeah. back in the 60s and 70s. And nowadays yeah. it's, it's getting back there. And you know, like. that's why places like planetariums and science centers are important because the people that work in planetariums and science centers have the ability to bring really tough things of science to understand down to a level where the public can understand. That's why Carl Sagan was probably the greatest astronomy educator there ever was because he could bring the most difficult topics to understand 
down to the level of kids or adults to understand. And that's why a lot of people actually are afraid of science because they think it's too technical for them to understand. And that's why we need things like planetariums like we have here or, or any community that has a planetarium because the, the personnel could bring that level down to the public to make it interesting and not make the public afraid of it. That's the importance of it all. I, I, I get that. And thank God for people like that, too, because I'm one of those dumb people. That's like that uh, uh, for people out there watch The Office. There's you know, <laughs> explain this to me like I was yeah. five. Yeah, I'm definitely one of those people. 